So to continue with the course, uh, accident and incident reporting. Now, wherever you work, there is going to be an accident book available. And if you have an accident, then it must be completed. Even if it's um, something that almost causes an accident, such as an EMS, then that needs to be reported as well. And the sort of things you need to put in the accident book is the person affected or the injured, their home address, person reporting the incident, all about the accident and incident, description of the accident and incident, and it must comply with data protection legislation. And RIDO, uh, again, you might want to pause the slide and I will think about this, but what does RIDO stand for? Well, it stands for the Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations, RIDO, 2013. And it means that certain classes of injuries and incidents must be reported to the Health and Safety at Work Executive. Things like fatalities, injuries and dangerous occurrences should be notified to the authorities by the quickest practicable means and have a full report submitted within 10 days. Accidents that result in the incapacitation of workers for over 7 days must be reported within 15 days from the day of the incident. In occupational diseases, a report of the diagnosis should be sent without delay. All reports are made to the Health and Safety Executive and can be reported online using the appropriate RIDO form. Once completed, the form will be submitted directly to the RIDO database. Hello, my name's Andy Love. This interactive course allows me to pop up at the end of each section to ask you questions about the module. Now don't worry, all the answers are in the information you'll be given. And if you get something wrong, I'll give you the right answer. So, good luck with the course. So number four, responsibilities of the emergency first aider. And these include arrival at the scene, dealing with casualties, contacting the emergency services, priorities of the first aid treatment, and the clearing up process. And with casualty communication, make and keep eye contact, always tell the truth, use understandable language, be careful of what you say, be aware of your body language, speak slowly, clearly and distinctly and allow time for the casualty to answer. And considerations when dealing with the following casualties must be taken into account. The elderly, children, non-English speaking, the hearing impaired and the visually impaired. So number five is action in emergency. Unit 5, Action in an Emergency. Remember the acronym LINEL when calling the emergency services. So the emergency services, uh, you can use 999 or 112. And you need to remember the location. You need to tell them to be specific. Give postcodes if you can. Tell them what the incident is all about. Any other services you might require. So it might well be police, uh, fire engine and ambulance, or just one or two. The number of casualties, the extent of injuries, and repeat location. Again, be very specific about the location. And prioritizing treatment or triage. When treating a casualty, always try to remain calm and confident. Deal with any conditions in the following order. First of all, breathing. Is the casualty breathing normally? Be prepared to resuscitate. Number two, serious bleeding or burns. Treat any large wounds, burns or skulls. Number three, bone or soft tissue injury. Immobilize any bone or joint injuries. And number four, other needs. Treat appropriately. This could include contacting family, etc. When dealing with any incident, who is the most important person to consider initially in respect of safety? Is it A, the casualty, B, bystanders, C, yourself, or D, the paramedics? Again, with this part of the course, if you want to uh, pause the video 
Um, so have a look who you think is the most important important person to consider initially. Respect the safety. And it is in this one. Yourself. What would the priority be when dealing with multiple casualties? A. Extensive burns. B. Severe bleeding. C. Obstructed airway. Or D. Fractures. So again, pause the video and decide which do you think would be the priority when dealing with multiple casualties. And we looked at this on the last slide. And the answer is... Okay, another uh, acronym to remember is STEP UP. Uh, remember to step up in an emergency. And that stands for stop, assess the situation. Traffic, consider safety at all times. Uh, again, it could be a road traffic accident. There might be other vehicles um, still driving. Environment, consider your limitations. Protection, make sure you protect yourself, your casualty and others. And don't forget, you are the most important person. You need to protect yourself first. Unknown hazards, uh, is there any gas, electricity, fire, etc. And prioritise, think triage. If your casualty has been electrocuted, what should you do first? A, start CPR. B, switch off the supply from the mains. C, call the emergency services. Or D, pull the plug out. Again, pause the video and think of which would be the most important thing to do first. And the answer is...